Hello and welcome to this processing video. I'm going to be working on some one-shot color RGB data of this globular cluster M13. So no fancy filters used on this, just plain RGB. Uh, I'll mostly be using PixInsight, but we'll actually start in Graxpert, which I've only been using recently, but it's pretty good for removing gradients. So I use this as a first step. I've loaded the image, and we can see it here, and uh, I'm using the interpolation method AI, smoothing 0.7, you can play about with that, see what works best for you. And after calculating background, we can see that it's done a pretty good job here. There's the original, and there's the processed. So after saving that, uh, we can open up PixInsight, and this is the saved file that was output from Graxpert. It looks pretty dark, that's because it hasn't been stretched, so let's just perform an unlinked screen transfer function just so we can see what the data looks like. And then let's make a clone of that. I always like to make clones of the data as we go along, and that way it's easy to go back if we mess anything up. All right, I'm gonna do this very quickly. So first thing, uh, I know my data is a bit oversampled, so I'm going to downsample it, the equivalent of binning times two. This will lower the file size, which will make uh, it faster when we're processing. It'll also give us a boost to signal to noise ratio. Next, I want to run image solver on this. This will help us when we do our color calibration in a moment. All these settings should be loaded up accurately, automatically, if you've been using an astronomical camera and the FITS file format. That might take a minute or two to run on your computer, but once it's done, we're going to load up SPCC which is, will give us some better colours. We need to choose an area where nothing's really going on for background. That's our preview one. We want a region of interest. There we go. And then let's run this. We can delete the preview. And let's run that unlinked STF again. Okay, making progress. Let's save this uh, as a new file here. Rename it, I mean, and then make a clone of it. Carry on. If we mess anything up, we go back to the last step. Next, we're going to run Blur Exterminator. I find that inputting the uh, point spread function, the PSF, manually gets me a better result. So in order to find out what number I need to put in there, I need to go to script render PSF image. If you don't have this, then you can just do a quick Google and find out how to install it into PixInsight. And let's click evaluate. A couple of minutes later, and here's the result. What we want to look for is the full width half maximum on the X and the Y. And we want to take a number between them, so about 1.46, I guess. Yeah, that would work. Let's click OK on that. 1.46 is what we need to remember. We're going to put in 1.46 here. Uh, we need to correct first if we're inputting this manually. And for this particular image of this globular cluster, I want us to have some nice star halos. So let's bump that up to 3. Uh, and then let's run it. two and a half minutes later and that is done. If we want to check to see exactly what the result was, we can uh, load up the previous step. And if we make, uh, actually let's just name this one Blur X so we don't get confused. If we make these two windows the same size, And let's zoom in a bit here. 
if we drag and drop the name from one window onto the other then the views will match and then if we position the windows over one another we can do control and page down to flip between the two so hopefully you can see on the video here that the Blur X version has tightened up the stars and added a bit of a halo which is what we wanted for this particular image so I'm happy with that let's make a copy and next we're going to run noise exterminator I know from experience with the kind of data that I have that about the noise level of 0.6 normally works so let's run that Well, that's done. Let's zoom in, it should seem a bit smoother. Yes, looking good. All right, let's call that one Noise X and make a clone of it. Next, I'm going to stretch the data. I know a lot of people don't do this step until a bit later in the processing, but I like to do it now. So let's bring up generalized hyperbolic stretch. We're going to take uh, the screen transfer function off. I'm going to zoom in with this magnifying glass icon and we're going to get a reading from about the middle of the graph here. We're going to click send to SP. Let's zoom out. We're going to stretch this a little bit and for the first pass our local intensity bump it up to about 12 or so. Oh mustn't forget let's click real-time preview so we can see what it's looking like very useful and it's not best to do it all in one go with this GHS but that's looking pretty good for a first pass let's click OK on that one and then let's do a second pass at it Oops, not that much. This time with our local intensity, maybe around the halfway point. Now what we don't want to do, especially with globular clusters like this, is to blow out the core stars. So let's do a zoomed in view and make sure that our stars are still looking good. We don't want to blow them out, you see. That's probably about as far as we want to go. And this icon to go us back to the full view. Okay, let's go with that. All right, we have our stretched image. Close this, close this. Rename GHS. And then make a clone of it. Next I want to deal with this blob here. Looks like the flats didn't quite catch a dust bunny. So what we'll do is bring up Starnet. We're not working with linear data. We want to create a star mask. So we're going to separate out the stars from this image and that will make it easier to fix that uh, artifact. And this is what we've got. We have our stars and we have our starless image here. And now we've got rid of the stars, it's going to be much easier to fix these artifacts. To do that, we're going to use clone stamp, uh, a big, big radius. Let's have a look. Oops, no, sorry, control and click. And then make it a bit smaller for the next one. Control, click, click, control, click, control, click. If we're happy with that, we have to remember to click the uh, green tick. Oh, 
Oh, I've missed a little bit there. Let's do that again. Okay, that'll do. As we're here, I think we might as well darken the background a little bit on this starless view. So we'll go to our curves. Bring that down a bit. And let's do the inverse to our stars. Let's give them a little boost. So let's go to our curves transformation. Bring that up. Have our real time preview. And let's zoom in a little bit. And just give these stars a bit of a boost. Yeah, that's looking better, isn't it? If we want to compare before, after, before, after. And let's go for our full screen view here as well. Looking good. And let's do the square to activate that. And perhaps we want to give the color saturation a bit of a boost as well. We can give it a go, see what it looks like. I like to have some punchy star colors. Move it to about there. Yeah, it's subtle, but I think it's good. But our boosting has brought out a bit of green, and we shouldn't have green in our stars. Easily fixed, though. SCNR, green, ping, there we go. OK, let's have a look. Is there anything else we want to do here? I think maybe the background is still a bit too bright. Let's try histogram transformation. Let's move that black point up a little bit. Okie dokie. Now we need to add our stars back into this view. So let's just call this one starless. Let's just call this one stars. Stars and M13 starless. And we'll do some very simple pixel math. M13 starless plus stars. And there we go. Those two images have now been combined, so we have the benefit of the darker background along with the brighter stars. Let's just call this M13 combined. You know what? We're almost done. You could play about a bit more with your curves and the saturation just to get it however you like, remembering to keep an eye on these core stars. Need to make sure we can see individual stars here. Yeah, have I gone a bit far with that? Maybe a bit far. Anyway, you play about with it. You see how you like it more than the curves. I like my images to be quite bright. And maybe a bit of saturation. Bring out those blues. And 
then a crop. Don't need to crop this one too much, just to taste however you like to do it. Tighten the framing a little bit. And then you tweak it a little bit more if you want. I generally put the images into Lightroom for a final pass, but I'm a bit unusual in doing that. Uh, anyway, that is that. A very quick uh, whistle-stop processing guide for some RGB data. I hope it was useful.